Hello, today we're going to have a quick look at the what's called the national grid. And before we do that, let's just figure out what we mean by the national grid. So firstly, it's a system of cables and what we call transformers, which link the different parts of the country. It links, links power stations to what we call consumers, and that's basically you and I, and also to you and I in our homes, but also to schools and businesses and all the other places that need a supply of electricity. The other thing is it's a network of cables and transformers, as we said, but that means homes and towns can be supplied by different routes. So if one particular area is not uh, transferring electricity for some reason, the electricity can be supplied by a different route. We also need to know and be able to explain why the transfer of energy is very efficient. And we're gonna have a look at that next. Okay, so here we have a model or a part of the national grid. And these are the main parts of the national grid that we need to know about. And the first thing at the on the left-hand side here is that we have our power station. Now our power station is going to supply the electricity. And it often does this by burning fossil fuels or by using nuclear fuel. That's not the only way we can generate electricity, but this is these are two major ways in which we generate our electricity. Once that electricity is being generated, it's passed through what we call a step-up transformer. And the transformer will then link to what we call transmission cables. So these are the cables, I'm sure you've seen these, around, around and about the place, but they can be above ground or sometimes they can be even below ground. That leads to a step down transformer, which will bring down the potential difference or the voltage to what can be used domestically or can be used in our homes. Okay, so these are the key parts of the national grid, but we need to be able to talk about how it works efficiently. So how is efficiency achieved by the national grid? Well, we've got to look at the amount of potential difference that is supplied by the power station and look at the current as well. So we've got 20, about 25,000 volts supplied at 1,000 amps. So these are typical values. That passes through the step-up transformer and that will step up the voltage to about 400,000 volts. But quite importantly, the current will be reduced to about 62.5 amps. So we've got a big increase in voltage, a high voltage, and a low current. And that's really important for transferring that energy around the country. We can work out why by just doing a simple equation that we've come across before. So you hopefully will remember power is voltage or potential difference times current. So if we did that for the numbers in red there, supplying the transformer, we've got 25,000 volts times 1,000 amps, and that gives us 25 million watts, or in other words, 25 megawatts of power. Now, if we do the same calculation after the step-up transformer, we've got a potential difference of 400,000 and a current of 62.5 uh, 62 62 amps. If we do the same calculation, we have 400,000 times 62.5, and you will notice that that also works out at 25 million watts, in other words, 25 megawatts. So the power is the same for both of those scenarios. However, the second scenario is much better because we have the same power, let's just say the same power, same power, but a lower current. That's achieved by having a higher voltage and a lower current in order to achieve the same power. And having a lower current is really useful because a lower current would generate less heat in the transmission cables. That means if less heat is generated, that means less heat is wasted to the surroundings or less heat is transferred to the surroundings in heating up the air. Okay, so you should be able to explain the different parts of the national grid system, but also the fact that we have a high voltage um, achieved by transformers and a low current. We eventually get to our step down transformer it might be a bunch of transformers, but that would then bring down the voltage or the potential difference to a safe 230 volts, which you can use in your home to charge your phones and your uh, watch TV and so on. Okay, so the key idea is that we need to have a high voltage at a low current, and the reasons are as described in the slide here. 